chance to be rude. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test. If only I could go back in time, I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright. Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like. And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime. Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life. A few friends with intent can help you feel alive. Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time. Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life. They'll try to kick you while you're down. They wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown they wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless
And good evening, everybody, and welcome to week three of the Armed Forces Dungeon League 2024 Warriors of the Rift. I am Megan Necrozma, joined again by Bread. How are we doing today? Hey, doing great, Mega. Can't wait for this game to start. I can't wait either. I've been uh, working all day. We kind of got a little bit of a heat bubble here, but I'm ready for... No, I'm not ready for the heat here. I'm ready for the heat on the rift. Tonight, we have the Air Force versus Warrior Gamers. It's a veteran organization. So our first veteran comp uh, first veteran competition against active serving military. So this one should be interesting. Uh, odds are, you'd have to think that like some of the veterans are probably still higher rank uh, in the military than... The Air Force. So couldn't you technically just pull rank and say like, hey, I'm your superior. You need to surrender. <laughs> I don't think it works that way, Mega. I think... Uh, <laughs> just let me dream. Rift, just let me dream. Yeah. On the Rift, there's no hold bars. There's no there's no brass. There's no tax. And it's just uh, <laughs> good gameplay. And uh, that's what wins you the game. As a reminder to everybody, the AFDL provides military personnel around the world with a fun, competitive, family-friendly way to interact and celebrate the commonalities of service members and their family, regardless of branch or nationality. Uh, if you would like to uh, contribute to the Armed Forces Dungeon League, uh, you can donate with exclamation mark donate in the chat or uh, the sub button below. We are about five subs away from our goal and all of the proceeds go towards a pool. The winning team selects a charity from the Activision Endowment. The prize money from this event will be donated on behalf of the AFDL. If you would like to support the AFDL and donate to our winner's chosen charity, you can click, the, like I said, you can click the link below the stream or type exclamation mark donate in the chat. And thank you all for joining us today. So, Brad, we are a week out from the newest patch. How are you feeling about it? I mean, what is there to say besides I hope they got their studies uh, going and I hope they studied the, the meta and um, it's a, it's a, it's about who can grasp about what's going on and who can figure out their item builds and the champion comps the best. Uh, it's a, the rift is always updating and it, it's something that each player has to keep an eye on and make sure that they're not missing out on anything and they have a good grasp of what the plan is going to be for the entire team. So I see the Golden Guardians hat. Uh, I know they're not in the league anymore, but did you watch any of the LCS this weekend? Oh, of course. Yes, both days. It was oh, yeah. action-packed from uh, start to finish. And I'm, the, I mean, first, I'm still I'm trying sorry. to no, I mean, uh, there's this split is like uh, one of the closest it's ever been in years, and all the teams are fighting for that number one spot. And uh, yeah, absolutely. If, you, if you're not watching the LCS, I I suggest you tune in on Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays. So the LCS is the only pro organization that is playing on the live patch. So they actually have the chance to dictate the meta and see what's strong. So we did see a lot of Skarner again this weekend. It was a hundred, basically a hundred percent pick ban to captain flowers happiness. When it was picked, he understands how strong it is, but a lot of other champs have made a resurgence. Ezreal got a nice, healthy, but healthy buff. Kaisa actually is starting to pick up a little bit more steam. We started to see the resurgence of Zeri, much to uh, everybody's chagrin, no one really likes to deal with, hey, cool, there's 5 million pentakills a week. Yay! <laughs> Static Shiv got changed, and it's actually a nice little buff for these uh, these champions to have a little mix of physical and magic damage like uh, Zeri Kaisa. But none of that really matters right now. We got our first set of bands, and Camille, Gragas, and Aatrox. Aatrox is actually a... He was buffed. Pretty health... Pretty, uh, pretty huge buff. His passive... Uh, sorry, his yeah, his, um, his umbral dash passive no longer grants a bonus healing during world ender, but at rank sixteen, if an Aatrox all has a hundred percent bonus healing, very gross. Uh, the Air Force has taken out the Lilia, Anivia, and Amumu, and like we were discussing, Warrior Gaming's mid laner is named Anivia. They're gonna be taking that away. It's kind of it, it's a given. And the junglers Amumu, we were able to look at their OPGGs. That's pretty much all they play. So what do you want to see from Warrior Gaming now? Yeah, there are cards on the table and you want to keep them as secret as possible. But here we are there. That's why we have uh, champion pools. And that's why that's why we practice uh, 
for multiple scenarios. If you've watched, if you watched the finals of War Worlds 23, you saw an Aatrox top, the Shy, playing out of China. He did choose Aatrox all three games against T1. Didn't fare so well, but somebody knows how to use him still. And uh, yeah, he is off the table. Uh, the Lilia, of course, is a great presence in the jungle. She has great movement speed, great OE, and she can uh, doze, uh, doze champions off with her ultimate. And uh, she is also off the table. Very annoying we got, we have... to deal with. Sorry. Here we I go. Continue. We have a we have a Jinx and a Shaco picked for the Air Force. And uh, we know uh, we know how uh, how many damage a Jinx can do. Uh, one of the best ADCs in the game, and uh, she uh, her movement speed and her her ultimate uh, is also. She's always someone that uh, that we have to put a uh, put an eye. On. And Shaco's a champion that we can't really pull an eye on because he goes invis and he's one of those sneaky champions. I can't wait to see what uh, what they have planned on the Air Force side. I mean, we have so anyone that's attempt to get caught out, they have Warrior Gamer has the Shen that that Stand United Ultimate, the massive shield and the ability to just make a fight. Uh, pretty one one sided in the favor of Warriors. The Aurelian Soul and Caitlyn going for that late game, though that burst potential. Aurelian Soul with the AOE execute Caitlyn, just long range shots. But a Katarina is also picked up for the Air Force. So this is looking like a kind of like a um, uh, comfort pick. It looks like some comfort picks from the Air Force. This Katarina is not exactly that meta right now. And then Warrior Gaming. A little bit surprising on the vein. I think they might be expecting uh, for Kempsey to take it back in the top lane, but you You're already correct. have to, that's they'd have to be assuming it because the Jinx has already been locked in. They don't really want to deal with the tank busting vein. Um, Warrior Gaming Shen does not do that well into vein. Can can be condemned out of his uh, AOE dodge. So a good ban from them, but a Janna ban for the Air Force. You really don't want to deal with that extra little bit of shielding. They think Warrior Gaming is trying to go on to a Protect the President comp. Keep one hyper carry alive. Yeah, we've been watching these two orgs all week long. And we know we've seen their OPGGs. We've seen them play Arena. We've seen them play Ram. These guys are prepared and ready to go. They've They've been working on their game. And I think they they're coming full force this week. All right, waiting for the last bin here from Warrior Gamers. So, I'm not really sure what to think of. Uh, we production has told us that the ban is not showing, but it is a Melio ban by Warrior Gamers. So, don't want to give that Jinx that little bit of extra attack range. Knowing when you switch to the rocket, she gets that extra fifty attack range. The absence of Lethal Tempo, that being removed from the game, did hurt Jinx a little bit, but once Jinx starts to get ramping with that Get Excited, she's picking up kill after kill and fight, the Lethal Tempo doesn't really matter. I always say, I always think a healer is necessary. No matter what comp you're choosing, I always like to stay here on the map, and uh, Melio is one of the best healers uh, support has to offer. So it looks like we are going to get Braxy's Nautilus for the Air Force. So Jinx Nautilus have not gotten the support from Warrior Gamers, but I, I like the Nautilus pick. It can help close the gap against the long-range Caitlyn, but they left the Morgana up, which is the pretty standard counter to Nautilus, and just can be used that extra little bit of shield that prevents CC while Shen channels the full alt on top of them. So... I think we should be getting a Morgana ban. I mean, a Morgana pick here, but we're unsure of what we're going to get from Warriors in the Jungle, considering that the Lilia and the Amumu, the two picks for the for Warriors Jungle, have been removed. Yeah, we see some strong game, and we see some strong top lane game, and there we go. We have a Skarner. There we go. As you the called Scarter it, Mega. picked 
Skarner picked for the top lane into the Shen. Just two, two wet noodles just slapping each other. But both of them with percent max health damage. The Alistar to counter the Nautilus. Any Nautilus engage, Alistar can instantly just knock him up. Try to get behind him and push him back under turret. So I do like that pick. Our graphic is unfortunately not showing Warrior Gamer's uh, jungle. So once we get confirmation from production as to what that is... we. We have a Wukong in the jungle. I like the pick. A little bit of extra team fight. It does look like they're going for that big Wombo team fight. If they can get Alistar to get a solid engage, Wukong to follow up in the Aurelian Soul on top of potentially two or three while they're in the air. This could be a very devastating comp. Uh, combo because Air Force, with the exception of the Nautilus and Scarter, their damage dealers are very squishy. Yeah, this it's all about preparation, and uh, I think some of the champions were banned out that were going to get picked, and uh, um, we might be seeing some plan B on, on the Air Force side and on the Warrior side. But yeah. sometimes plan Bs can work out, and uh, that's uh, that's the test for the pick ban stage is can you adapt, can you overcome, can you set your sails towards victory, and keep on moving no matter what adverse uh, adversary you find on the other side. All right. So the Katarina pick, Katarina and the Shaco picks from the Air Force are two of the kind of uh, wild card picks. What do you want to see from the Air Force? What do you want to see from Madara? And what do you want to see from Adam, who is a newcomer? We have not seen Adam play yet for the Air Force. So what do you want to see from them to take this first game very convincingly? On the, the jungle side, I want to see great jungle pathing. I want to ensure that Shaco is making sure all three of his lanes are pushing to, and getting plates. Earned. And for Katarina, Katarina needs to make sure both sides of the objectives are getting taken. She, she wants to get the first dragon. She wants to get the second dragon. And she wants to make sure the grubs are at least maybe getting pressured if if uh, if it comes to a a strong warrior jungle path so shako does take the grubs fairly well especially if he has that time to kind of set up setting up those boxes just in time like you will see your soul queue shakos do when he's able to do red start red start blue by himself setting up those boxes can get a very good burst onto at least one of the grubs he can smite it and jump away reset in a little bit so the shako pick like you said, I do want to see that priority towards Grubs because he's not going to be able to do Dragon by himself. Caitlyn and Jinx are kind of like iffy. Neither of them can really wave clear that well. Caitlyn probably can do it a little bit better with the uh, Piltover Peacekeeper firing that Q through the minions, just being able to one tap all uh, most of them to try to keep the wave pushed. But none of these teams really have like a very solid DPS threat until late game. Warrior Gamers with the Aurelian Soul percent max health and the Caitlyn just headshotting like crazy. And the Jinx AP, uh, sorry, um, APM and Skarner doing that percentage max health damage in the DOT. So not really sure what we're going to see here from either side, but we are going to get onto the rift here in just a couple of seconds for game one between the Air Force Gaming and Warrior Gamers. Here we go. Let's see if there's any early invades. It's all about aggressiveness. Can you come into the game playing aggressive? And who takes we advantage are gonna, of that? We are going to see a little bit of aggression. Braxy's trying to get that dredge line. Will not connect onto Anivia. It's going to be so weird calling Aurelian Soul by their name, which is Anivia, which is also a champ that's not in the game. <laughs> Adapt and overcome. It's a military way, and I'm sure they can as much as we can. We are going to get the Shaco box set up for the blue buff. There is, he is going to get rid of his bot lane, send Shiro and Braxy down to the lane to set up that early to set up. Uh, it looks like they're about to potentially attempt to try to cut someone off, but they're not going to be successful. Very passive play so far. Ready just to get the, the waves going and uh, 
and see might get some get action it. here might get some action here in the bot lane. It looks like Braxy has taken a little bit of damage. Nerf, J uh, Nerf GP, the Caitlyn, is almost dead, and she is going to fall for first blood. Shiro is right there. She's getting excited. Alistar tries to knock back Shiro, but it doesn't matter. Braxy pulls him again, and a double kill. Shiro, 2-0 in under two minutes. A double kill for the Jinx to start off, and this is looking great for the Air Force. I can't think of a better way to start off the game than a 2-0 start. Great job, Air Force. They came ready to play. Well done by them. Um, standard pathing here. Looks like the Wukong is just going to be able to try to do all of his can. All right. Is going to bypass the Raptors. Good idea. That ward is there from the Air Force. So it will not spot the Wukong, but are going to potentially see just a, another standard uh, bot to top path. Shaco is matching, so we might get to see some action here around the top scuttle or potentially in the top lane. Yeah, and we know that uh, Shaco usually wins battles. If they meet in the river, I, I think that we're going to see a monkey uh, running to, to the trees. Jinx backs and already picks up that recurve bow, that extra little bit of damage. So is going to be rushing more towards that uh, the Kraken Slayer. A lot of trading up here. Bosphus is not going to win out on that trade. A nice wave by the Scar from the Skarner. And this, again, this percent max health burn is just way too much for the Shen to deal with this early. Shen, like I mentioned earlier, he has that percent max health uh damage on his q but again you're not those are in those are just auto attacks not guaranteed to get those hits and we don't see the junglers uh meeting on top river shaco decided to go bottom get the bottom scuttle i think he's setting up for an early drag push it looks like we're about to get some action here mid katarina's trying to get some trying to poke out a little bit but wukong is uh wukong's gonna try to do an invade here shaco is not aware that chrissy is taking his raptors but we're about to get some action here here chrissy got dashies level four by first Chr dashies okay. by chrissy though so there is no escape but madara does not want to take that fight like you said chrissy is level four that extra little bit of damage that armor shred from the wukong lance can do a lot of damage in those extended trades. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the Shaco uh, opted for a early attack and uh, tried to defend his uh, Raptors. Uh, got there a little late, but he is making up for it for, for some uh, with his Krugs up top, making that extra trip. Not going back yet, but uh, okay, now he's getting back. And uh, let's see if he can... Uh, scale up and uh hopefully if he sees the wukong again he can uh, be a little bit more prepared for it we will see the chemtech dragon spawning first right at five minutes another minute the grub spawn so we should be getting some action here soon this bot lane for the uh air force now with those early kills are just able to take a lot of pressure it's just a couple hits from the rockets will clear out the caster minions and full boots in for shiro as well a disgusting jinx early and this is something they definitely do not want to deal with yeah but if, if you can see mid lane uh anivia is uh, really really dominating lane and she's she's been there by herself collecting uh collecting minion kills and getting her gold up i think she's gonna be something to look out for later in the game absolutely this aurelian soul the only bright side to that is you cannot maneuver the um the breath of light that well especially once uh when there's a jinx running around you at the speed of light so yeah. it's the only saving grace that the air force really have in this uh in dealing with this aurelian soul but a lot of aggression here shiro and brax are going very hard the ignite is dropped onto the caitlin the barrier in response and nothing doing shiro is doing a lot of damage though a couple more hits is not going to be able to find it the turret dissuades the push however shako in the top side was able to get a great gank off onto the shen he does fall 
the box is there to try to stop Chrissy from doing anything else. The all from Aurelian Soul comes down. Nothing happens, but the Stand United is there onto the Wukong. This makes it a 3v3 again. Chrissy is going to try to pick up another kill. Adam picks up Chrissy as he tries to escape. He's running, but he's so close to getting Al Basefuss is rushing him down and does pick up one. The Execute is going to go through. Skarner falls a two for two extended fight. So much action in the early game. I love to see it. I love the early action. Yeah. Yeah. Aggressiveness is a tactic. Some teams choose to play passive and wait until a mid game bout to, to show what they got. But some teams, they want to go in early and, and flex the first half. Ooh. Madara is very low. Chrissy is right there. However, Kemsey and Basefus are fighting still in the top lane. Both top laners can join. The mid laners were roaming up as well. The no smite for Madara means he did not have the damage to secure the grubs. And Chrissy is right there to pick up one and is going to secure the other two as well. So three grubs for Warrior Gaming. And that is a very good, uh, that is very good outcome for them. Yeah, I'm waiting to see if Wukong makes his way down bottom. Jinx already has the 150 bounty gold, and uh, his bot lane seems to be struggling a lot. I'm, ho I'm hoping to see Wukong get down there and uh, maybe turn the tide a little bit. So the Impale and the Super Mega Death Rocket both missed. Good escapes, but right now... They've got about a 1,500 gold lead for Air Force Gaming, and a lot of that is sitting in the CS lead in top and bot lane. At 20 lead on the AD carries plus two kills, and 30 in the top lane for the Skarner. So a, a decent chunk of a gold lead at only eight and a half minutes. Yes, I think uh, Warrior Gaming knows how strong a Skarner can be, so they're focusing on that top lane and uh, getting Shen some kills early on and making sure that Skarner does not make too much noise. Braxy is taking a lot of Breath of Light. We'll give a couple extra Stardust stacks to the Aurelian Soul, but it doesn't really matter to him that much for now, though. Later, that can be a lot bigger of a chunk of damage, especially because I believe this Nautilus is just going to be focusing on armor and health. Not exactly going to be purchasing a lot of MRs. He will not have the money for it. I think both teams are a little shy around the dragon right now. They know it's a top priority. And I don't think they're willing to go all in for the dragon just yet. Ooh. Oh my gosh, a lot of damage onto Braxy, but unfortunately the Aurelian Soul Alt and the Ace in the Hole are not enough to take him down. This does apply a lot of pressure though. Shiro does not want to stay in this lane by himself in Immobile AD Carry, but unfortunately the Caitlyn and the uh, the Caitlyn is just a little bit too low. They don't exactly want to go in just yet. A nice zap from Shiro will do about 100 damage to, uh, to the Caitlyn. Uh, up in the top lane, again, the Skarner's able to solo kill Shen. A great play from them, and that is going to be a healthy chunk of plates. Going the way of the Skarner, just expanding that gold lead. Now up 40 CS. Yeah, some top laners can work well with their jungler. Some are fine just playing the one-on-one -on -one game. And we see it here. Both junglers are down in the bottom lane, and the top lane goes head-to-head. -head. Skarner comes out on top on this one. Now we have a dragon fight coming up, coming about. Jink throws down her traps, locks down two. A nice, a nice smite from Shaka will secure it as the fight breaks out. The Wukong Cyclone will knock up the Katarina. Dread, uh, the ult connects onto Caitlyn and a lot of damage, a very split fight, but Caitlyn is left on her own with no team to help her. The ult from Shen had come through, and Super Mega Death Rocket finds the kill! Shen is about, Shaco is about to go over the wall, eats a little bit of the Breath of Life, and is now, he cannot go in that much further. Alistar is trying, he pops the Unbreakable Will, but there is no damage. He had no Ignite to finish off the Shaco. 
and a disaster for Warrior Gaming's Air Force picks up the dragon as well as three kills. Wow, my heart's beating. It's getting kind of sweaty. I'm I'm liking both teams seem like they want it. But only one can this Skarner has taken four plates by himself, but he is about to get collapsed on. Chrissy and Anivia are here, ready to fight, ready to deal a lot of damage. The skies descend onto Kemsey. Chrissy is right there to try to pick up the kill. They want to give this over to the Aurelian Soul, and they will. Anivia picks up her first kill. The Anivia picks up his first kill of the game. And the Aurelian Soul stacking has started. Right now, the bot lane is pushing in. Jinx by herself cannot step up, knowing this Alistar could just jump in and kill her very easily. Great job from Warrior Gaming. Good rotations. Way to find the 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 champion pushing a little bit farther than he should have. Way to take advantage of that. I like to see Warriors still in the fight. We are going to get another fight here around the Grubs, the Shaco clone, as well as the Shaco itself attacking the Grubs. Chrissy is trying to get in there, but Kempsey is ready with a double impale. It connects onto the Wukong as well as the Shen and a disaster for Warrior Gaming as Madara and Adam are right there to pick up one. Kempsey is trying to throw a rock over the wall. Adam is chasing. He's feeling himself and he's going to try to attempt this dive and he will succeed. A bunch of damage. Adam jumps over, pops down the pops down the whirling daggers, and does so much damage. Blows up Anivia. Jinx is pushing in the bot lane, and this is the Air Force gaming we expected to see. I have to say something about when a team wants to play aggressive, you can't lose sight of your game plan. If you were going to play aggressive, then you have to stick to your game plan. For Warrior Gaming just because the other team is playing aggressive doesn't mean you have to pick up the tempo take your recalls spend your gold and be prepared for the next fight you don't have to rush into anything just because the other team is looking for a fight so i think they still have a good chance because i think they they did build a certain a sizable amount of gold and you can see some some items are getting formed and I think these next couple fights will be at the most importance. So 7,000 gold lead for the Air Force at 14 minutes. A 40 CS lead for the AD carry. It's almost fit over 50 in the top lane. And this is a very scary Air Force team. The Kraken Slayer has been finished for the Jinx, starting off that crit spamming. But Braxy stepping a little up a little bit too far as Shiro is trying to put some damage into the Alistar. The Unbreakable Will and the Cyclone are used, but it doesn't matter. They can't even get to Shiro. The Super Mega Death Rocket does not matter. The Stand United is there trying to get that extra little bit of damage. The Ace in the Hole finds the kill. Madara is attempting. He wants to, he wants to secure a couple extra kills, but he is going to go too deep. Oh, the knife fires yeah. past the clone into the back of the Wukong, and he is searching for another kill. Oh, Caitlyn is so low. Katarina goes a little bit too far. Madara is right there. And Tiamat Proc will pick up another kill. Oh my gosh, action all over the map. We were praising the Air Force and then they just got a little bit too greedy. The Aurelian Soul Alt does not matter. And he walks into the Breath of Light, a shot down for the Aurelian Soul. Three kills to the Aurelian Soul now. A very scary dragon is about to be on the rift. Yeah, the way Air Force is pl is playing, it kind of reminds me of uh, bumper cars at the at the town fair. Uh, if Mega, if you ever been to one of those, they're ramming into people as them. And at first, it does work. There is there is that challenge to to, to adjust to that, but they can't play like that all game long. They need need to to regroup and figure out which objectives they're going to go for. 
But between all of that, the gold lead only shrunk by one and a half thousand gold. The CS has been caught up in mid, and honestly, this Aurelian sold now is should be even on gold with Katarina as the Air Force will start up this dragon. Absolutely no response from Warrior Gaming, who are going to go for the Herald instead. Oh, excuse me. Super Mega Death Rocket will hit nothing. Will scout out that they are on it, but at this point, it doesn't really even matter. The Warrior Gaming will be able to take this Herald pretty easily, but Air Force is responding. They will push mid and bot at the same time. Shen does not have Stan United, and he's just chilling top lane, so any fight that they take, they will not have to worry about the Shen ult. Yeah, I think, uh, I think both teams are trying to flex a little bit and see and see which ones are stronger at this point 17 minutes in i don't know if they if they know who's winning or not i i think i think they're they're pretty evenly matched but and i think they they realize that that it, it's still an even game 17 minutes in and they don't the want to force anything too soon Shaco alt was popped. We got two clones out on the field right now as Kempsey is going in for the flank. A TP out from the Shen. We'll put him in the middle of the team. Cyclone hits on the three, go. but Madara does not care. The Caitlyn has fallen. A Niv uh, the Katarina will as well, but Shiro is still alive, and that's all that matters. A four for one, and this is going to be a very good push for the Air Force. They are going to be able to try to get in onto anivia going to dodge the dredge line but you ha but anivia has the skies to send that's a weird sentence to say as someone who's played league since 2013 anivia has skies to send <laughs> yeah say that three it, times it, it fast. feels it feels it's not even just that but braxy is going to get chunked the skies to send will come down a lot of damage but kempsey is there in the reply oh, dredge line connects pushed back and oh no the stand united is popped but it is not going to matter shen gets through at the last second but the shield is not enough kempsey looks like he's going to try to invent going to go for this but the ward comes down kempsey he does not want to take this 3v1 you're strong but you're not that strong yeah confidence confidence is something that uh can sh can bite you on the leg and uh we just want to make sure that uh, not, uh, too, playing with too much confidence will will detriment your team if you if you can't control it. And you know, Skarner players, all they know is oh, they know, they know this game is so far away. Eight and a half thousand gold lead at 19 minutes, and this is just an insane amount of pushing power. Adam the pancake just jumps onto Caitlyn, and she is gone. Caitlyn. Uh, is instantly evaporated. Kempsey is able to pick up the Alistar as Shiro is chasing down Shen, but it doesn't matter. Chrissy is not in a good spot. The Super Mega Death Rocket connects, does not deal enough oh, damage, man. but the knife does. Oh, Anivia is right there. The DPS is going to just barely be enough. Those boxes have done a lot of damage. So the Aurelian Soul has to run another four for one in favor of the air force and this is looking dire yes uh warrior gaming in the mid lane uh, with the aurelian soul seems to be picking up some of the the slack but i don't know if it's gonna be enough to be able to turn turn the battles around it it needs i need to see a five and five that the game's really over but it's it's certainly getting there with the Air Force gaming is uh, just taking the reins and and driving this car wherever they see fit. Heart steal for the Shen, but you are so far behind. That heart steal is not stacking at all. Six deaths on the Wu Kong, only completed the Triforce. No armor shred, but there's just so much damage on the air force's side that there's little that they can do about it the rift herald was dropped bot lane is going to try to charge down this turret but there's no one that can be over there the shen should be but is not in a prime position for it braxy is hunting the sweeper will reveal him a little bit of a slam down just roots the Alistar for a second, but it doesn't really mean much. Just trade those support shields. 
Yeah, if you Scarner. tell me if you tell me a Caitlyn's out of the fight, I'm gonna tell you you're crazy. Anytime there's a Caitlyn in the game, you know it's it's gonna be down to the last Nexus. Anivia will check the red. They will spot Madara. The alt from the Nautilus will connect onto a Rowing Soul, but it does not do anything. There is no one else nearby to follow up, so a wasted Nautilus all, and this could be the entrance that Warrior Gamer needs, but Braxy and Kempsey are there, ready to find the team as they come in. Kempsey is searching around the side, will connect on the Rowing Soul, but the Katarina all goes over three. Shen all onto the Wukong. Braxy is almost about to die. Kempsey picks up a Rowing Soul, and the fight is so spread. Shaka will take down the Wukong, picks up a double kill, knocks down the Shen, and that is a four for nothing. An improvement. And Skarner, hey, never mind. He made me a liar. He picks up the Caitlyn, a clean five for nothing ace. Unfortunately, there's only one minion wave that they can push, so looks like we will only be able to get one inhib turret and not much else. Yeah, you said it yourself. The, the fight was really spread out, and and Air Force Gaming took advantage. This now we're going to have just... to see late game tactics. So we're officially in the late game now, and and if if we can see a Baron steal, then that might be enough to do it. But it takes so much skill to be able to steal a Baron. And and I know Warrior Gaming are prepared and they are ready for this match. So let's see if they, they, they practice their, their Baron steals. A 14,000 gold lead at 23 minutes. I don't know if a Baron steal would be enough to salvage this game. The Air Force is just slapping them with their wallet at this point. 7-3 Skarner, 8-2 yeah. Shaco, 8-4 Katarina. The bot lane that started out 2-0. I mean, hey, I think Jinx has fallen off. She only got two kills since the second minute. So only two kills in 22 minutes? What are you doing? I, I think I've been made a liar again. Chrissy, I am made a liar. Chrissy is caught out. Shiro picks up his fifth kill of the match, but it does not matter. There's just so much damage being put out. A lot of damage onto Shiro, but Anivia has to run away. Madara, a three-man impale just sets up Warrior Gaming for their death. Shiro is extremely excited, and that is going to be it for game one. The Air Force off the back of an amazing impale by Kempsey. He will fall, but it does not matter. Oh my God, what a great fight. That was great. Bruisers up front, damage dealers in the back. They played that one to perfection. Oh, the Anivia is caught out one more time. So is Chrissy. A double kill for Nautilus to end the game. A 16,000 gold lead at 24 minutes. The Air Force confidently take game one. Game one is in the books. Ooh. And... Uh... I told you, uh, I told you about this before. It's all about adjustment. It's all about seeing what the obstacles are and then taking mm -hmm. advantage of it and trying to get over over what just happened. League of Legends is a game that where you have to have a short memory, and with that short memory comes the confidence to go into the next one and be ready to fit out and try to take what you can when it's in front of you. So, a amazing play by the Air Force. They did a fantastic job that game. Even those fights that were kind of even, they still walked away with better health bars on their remaining members than Warriors Gaming did. It, it's just, after that 2v2 double kill early game for Shiro, it just looked like they just had all the confidence in the world that they knew they could take them down. Chrissy, unfortunately, two of two of their uh, picks were just target banned in the first round. So you're stuck on the Wukong, and you're you're trying this team fight comp, and you can't seem to uh, you can't seem to find that one combo that works because the Madara Shaco is in your face all the time. He's never where you're not. You always have to know there's a clown over my shoulder, and he's going to stab me in the back. Yeah, I don't think they were ready for that amount of pressure that early. When uh, when Air Force 
game and came into the the match they had their mindset of pressure 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 and take the camps as they can the wukong couldn't he couldn't scale he wanted to he couldn't get his items and that it left him uh, uh, chasing that uh chasing that train all the way to the station uh, shen was doing what he could top lane but it was just a it's a team game and uh when when all five get together we, we saw how how that bot lane early on went to went to the birds and uh air force uh really took advantage of that so yeah i think it was great individual play by both teams but at, uh, the team play by air force gaming took the took the cup home warriors gaming the uh their mid laner in nivia did put up a solid attempt there at the end picked up a couple of yeah, shutdown yeah, kills did. a did. lot of damage she hit a great skies to send on to shiro but unfortunately as soon as shiro realized he was in trouble the entire team is just like <laughs> you're gonna die now you 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 are not gonna make it out of this alive so they just dog piled and he immediately had to run but if that if they had not helped shiro i think that would have actually been the way that warriors gaming actually gets back into the game it would have taken a lot more than just one fight it would have been a consecutive series of fights that that happened in that exact same way but the air force is not that team to make that mistake they do not let their hyper carry just out in the cold like that they will always make sure that shiro is alive and doing damage i completely agree and with this the jungler's job is to make sure your team is farming as they should but with that scarner pick up top he had to focus that top lane he had to to get some ganks in to make sure it didn't get to uh the scarner didn't get too strong but on the other end the bot side i mean you saw what the the jinx and the nautilus could do when mm -hmm. they're left alone to play and when the cat's away the, the yeah. they, they threw a party in that bot lane and they they uh, they didn't let uh, warriors gaming bot side farm as much as they they should have been farming yes uh as like i mentioned at the beginning of the cast the armed forces dungeon league is operated entirely by an incredible team of volunteers if you are interested in getting involved you have many positions that are available you can type exclamation mark volunteer in the chat and follow the link we're always looking for new team members uh our producer marielle is basically a one woman show and she is doing a fantastic job setting us up to be able to give you guys an amazing cast week over week as well as pulling double duty and doing production and cast like she did for the european series earlier today so thank you marielia thank you everybody on the production team and we are going to go to a short break before we come back for game two
and welcome back to day uh week three of the warriors of the rift 2024 summer bread we just got to watch the air force put on a show oh no question about it they they came ready to brawl and they walked out of there with their heads held high so uh we are going into game two i believe we are going to be uh we are going to be uh saying on the same sides i believe the air force should still be getting on the red side so that counter pick again but uh i don't really think the counter pick mattered that much they were there is a uh, stipulation in the rules that they are allowed to go out of order that they do not have to sit immediately in the uh in the lobby as top jungle mid bot support so they tried something different with uh with dealing with a lack of a champion pool but it did not really matter they they really did not have to worry about anything because every single one of their picks just ended so far ahead of the uh of warrior gamers but actually we have confirmation from production it is a side swap the air force will be taking blue side they also will be going back to standard pick order so we are going to get to see them in order unlike last game they are not picking their own champions so what do you want to see change up from warrior gamers to try to bring this to a game three i want to see aggression early on uh, we saw the invade work out a little bit on the side of the air force i want to i want them to be waiting for the air force if they come to invade i want them to be prepared for something early and just have their wits about them when it just right off the bat and know that uh the punches are going to be coming in and uh know how to do dodge them or t take them to the ground if uh if necessary and uh, yeah just expect overall aggression early on from air force gaming because they obviously came to play so a uh i i, I can't really even find anything to really we we've pretty much touched on everything from the last game but what we saw from that, the air force that 2-0 start that 2-0 start down yeah the bottom it really really turned the tides for for all of the uh, all of course and uh warriors had to bounce back you don't want to start the game to having already down a couple of kills so just starting strong and uh keeping getting to mid lane with some mm -hmm. items and uh just uh and be ready for team fights because uh if um uh, if your if your bruisers are in the back and your and your your AD carry and support are first in line, that's that's uh that's the first sign that tell you that um, things are not going to go your way. So another Malphite ban from Air Force. They want to pinch this small pool in the top lane, but that potentially leaves uh, one of the Lilia or the Amumu up. So I wonder if they're, they've got a special pick in mind for top lane that Malphite would counter. Warrior does not want to deal with Kempsey's Camille. So something else that we noticed the last time, last couple of times when we've had the Air Force is that they rarely pick the same champion two games in a row. Like the, the odds of us seeing Shiro on Jinx again are pretty small. And odds are we're probably going to get a Caitlyn from him. So I I want to, I hope for the next season that we have this, potentially for the spring, uh, for the fall, if we do it, I'd want to see and implement a fearless draft. Uh, Air Force is basically playing on it anyway, right. but adding in the fearless draft, that extra little bit of, uh, pool uh pool pinching but it does not matter we will not see kempsey on the scarner that old scarner image oh the old <laughs> scarner icon oh, i miss you purple scorpion rest in power my friend uh we will not see shiro's jinx but we are just severely pinching the pool of this top laner uh malphite nasus and timo taken off the list so that will leave chrissy's amumu up so odds are we will see that insta lock for warrior gamer want to give chrissy that uh, that little bit of comfort that extra team fight power so i I'm, I'm interested to see what air force is doing here if they are just trying to severely pinch the pool of this top laner and what their second round of bands are or is this in are these ego bands do they not really have to deal with anything 
That's why they banned them. They're locking in Kempsey's vein right away. A Sivir Renata answer from Warrior Gamer, but Kempsey on the vein again. He just wants to have fun this game, and oh, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, as you can see, Air Force going for Vayne. Loves to have their top lane as strong as possible. They, they seem like a very top lane oriented team. And uh, they, with these bands, I mean, they're great bands. And, uh, but as you mentioned, with the Fearless Draft, they wouldn't need to waste their bands on, on champions already played. But it's, we're not there yet. We're still trying to get these team comps to, to work together and uh, to play their best. So for now, bands are going to have to be wasted on champions already played. And I think they were great bands. I mean, the Camille was a great choice to take out another top laner. They, they, I think Warrior Gaming sees what the Air Force is trying to do, and they're trying to counter it as best they can. Karthus in the jungle for Madara. And we are going to see, uh, excuse me, Braxy's Pike. So... Oh, this is just high damage. The only thing is Renata's alt, that uh, that hostile takeover, just if that hits Vayne, whoever is on Air Force is going to get shredded. That percent health true damage will apply to her own team. And if they have a tank, I don't think Air Force really is going to want to tank this game, but I don't know. If we do get to see Chrissy Zamumu combined with a late game Sivir, if it makes it to that point, those two can just completely decimate between an Amumu, um, Amumu on any despair, or, sorry, Curse of the Sad Mummy, combined with the Renata all over them, and that is a recipe for disaster. But we will see Anivia's Anivia. But uh, they sacrificed the Amumu, so Air Force will ban that out. The Katarina and the Gragas banned from Warrior Gamer. So interesting bands here. Looks like every single one of them now is targeted. They don't want to give Kempsey three of his top top performers. They don't want to see Adams Katarina again. Yeah, it's all in the name, Mega. It's all in the name. And uh, yeah, if you're going to be named after something, then you better, if you're going to bring it to the table, it better be nice and polished for everyone to see. Absolutely. So... We're waiting to see what the next pick, next pick is here for Warrior Gamer. I assume we're probably going to get our jungle pick here and leave top lane a counter. Actually, I'd potentially switch it, but should be getting the Lilia in since Lilia and Amumu were banned by Air Force Gaming in the first game. So I imagine that we're going to get the Lilia, but we will get to see B34's Poppy. So, ooh, a, a nice pick, a, that little bit of that good counter into Vayne. Poppy is able to rush Vayne into the wall and pop the Steadfast Presence. Vayne cannot tumble out without first condemning the Poppy, but you want to save that condemn for terrain. I've heard a little bit about his Poppy. I know he's been practicing it a lot, and I'm glad he gets to show, showcase what, what he has in store for us, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing what, uh, what he brings to the table. So waiting for the next picks in for the Air Force. So should be, this is already shaping up to be an extremely different draft from game one. A Vayne versus Poppy top lane. We have Karthus locked in in the jungle for the Air Force. But last time we saw Madara's uh, Karthus, it was dominant. He did so much damage. Once he picks up that Malign, oh my god. Oh we Air Force is egoing. The Air Force is egoing. A Talon and a Zed. Talon, Zed, Pike, Vayne, Karthus. Oh my gosh, this is a silver draft if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, when the Assassins come out, uh, we we know that there's going to be a lot of individual play. And uh, these guys are going to just take the wheels and uh, drive as fast as they can. Yeah, we, we see some sports cars on the track today. So I, the poppy pick is going to be extreme value, stopping the vein tumble, the uh, Talon, he, uh, two of his dashes, the Pike dash. I don't believe it stops the Zed shadows, but I don't really think it matters because if Poppy cannot keep three assassins off the back line, she's going to be 1v4. It will not matter. The 
Ramis. Yes. Uh, it's a great pick. 480 champions. But the only thing is, Vayne has percent max health true damage. Once she gets enough healing, that thorn mail damage will not matter. That reduced healing will not matter. And Vayne can condemn Ramis out of his uh out of his bowling ball, for lack of a better term, and stop that potential engage. So I think the Air Force should just be able to take this purely based off of experience, but Warrior Gamer does have the chance to bring us to a game three just off of the ego draft of Air Force. Yeah, we see Cipher on the board. We know, but with the with the distance uh, Cipher can keep and with the Renata as one of the best supports in the game, I think that their bot lane is going to be a lot stronger than it was last game, and they're just going to sit back, farm as much as they can, and wait until that Anivia and Ramis can can bring them home and uh, get these team battles down down. The, but uh, they're just gonna have to be careful. They're gonna be have to with uh, with Zed. You know the mobility Zed has and how he can dominate a lane, and he can either go top or bottom. And but we're gonna look. We're gonna look for controls on both sides. And uh, as I always say, objectives are always always key. If you can. Uh, if you can get your ADC, if you can get your support to, to be able to help with the objectives, and they can only do that if if uh, they have enough leisure to to get away from lane. And uh, so, yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna see a lot from both teams these next twenty minutes. So, Anivia versus Zed. Anivia shouldn't lose this post six. You can just constantly keep the wave shoved against the Zed, prevent that, uh, prevent that jump through. And again, Anivia, just, as long as you know your champ well, as soon as Zed pops through with the ult, you can throw your your freeze right behind you, stun him immediately, and get that massive burst of. Uh, excuse me. Get that massive burst of damage. So, huh. I'm interested it's, to see how this is going to turn out. It's going to be play by play. It's going to be my minion. Nothing's nothing's going to be given. It's it's, uh, it's I I don't think this team comp has been tested by, from Air Force Gaming. It's just not team comp. I can't setup. imagine anyone would actually. Th And we have got confirmation from production that there is a delay. The draft will need to be remade. Anivia picked a banned skin, so they are going to be redoing the draft with same pick, same or uh, same pick. So should be getting into game here in just a couple seconds. But yeah, I can't imagine anyone would actually be like, you know what? I think we should try 480 champions and a Carthus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, obviously confidence is being showed, but with confidence comes strength, and I think they're showing a lot of strength. Uh, these games are serious. Both these orgs, we've been talking about them all week. These orgs want to show the best that they have, and they're 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 all trying to make a name for themselves. And no matter what what sport you're in, winning. Well, and, and uh, even though Air Force Gaming is is up by one game, there I think I think they have it in the the bag. But I my 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 heart is going with Warrior Gaming right now, and I think they're coming with a better team comp. So the Karthus is going to be critical here. Karthus could absolutely blow up anyone. A Warrior Gamer, the Poppy and the Ramus are not going to be able to spare any MR because they're going to have to deal with the damage from the rest of the Air Force's comp. But the, I don't know, do you remember the item Anathema's Chains? Yes, yes, yes. So Anathema's Chains, Anathema's Chains, for those of you who may not remember or were not around, uh, it was a seldom built item, but it was meant for 
purpose it was meant for comps specifically like this where you have four of one type of damage threat and one of the other so if this were even flipped if you had four magic damage one physical but you have four physical one magic whoever was building your tank so ramus in this instance would sacrifice one of those item slots would build anathema's chains and hit onto karthus once an enemy was chained it was I believe 60 seconds and every two seconds it would add one stack once it hit 60 seconds and 30 stacks they would have 30 they would take 30 percent reduced damage from the enemy that was changed as well as increasing the uh or sorry decreasing the opponent's tenacity meaning any crowd control effects stun taunt uh root snare suppress would increase by uh by a sh uh, small duration but 33 35 percent basically a three second route becomes a four second route and one second in league of legends feels like an hour if you've ever been rooted by a morgana q so the lack of anathemas now does actually hurt warrior gaming because this ramus yeah he does a lot of damage but if he gets on top of karthus all karthus has to do is put on the swirls pop a little bit of skittles so and, and ramus will blow up but if you're focusing the karthus guess what you're not focusing vain the Zed is focusing your Sivir. The Talon is focusing your Renata. And Pike is just cleaning up kills with the uh, the Death from Below. So this is an executable comp for Air Force Gaming. However, Warrior Gamers definitely have ways to just get in and clean this up very easily. Air Force Gaming is going to have to come out strong and early or this Ramus uh ramus and poppy will just be able to absolutely run over the entirety of the air force team i completely agree yeah we've we've been checking in on these teams and they've been practicing they've been getting their a ram in they're beginning their arenas in and they're they've been focusing on every aspect of their game and like you said yeah the karthus he's one of those champions where if he's there it feels like there's three champions there in his place and and you sometimes you just don't know what to expect so yeah he's gonna bring a lot a lot to the battles and it's all it's all gonna be about focus like you said who who is warrior gamers gaming gonna focus are they gonna focus the zed they're gonna focus the the vein up top or they're gonna focus the karthus with the i mean with the Ramus, he has a choice. Who's who is he gonna go for with that stun? He's gonna actually have to click on one of the champions. And I hopefully they're that's what they're discussing right now and debating on whether the Poppy can who who is she gonna use her ultimate again against to to knock a champion out of the battle? Who is Ramus gonna focus with his stun? And uh, you know if Sivir is left untouched, then she's attacking the whole team all at once and i'm looking i'm looking forward to this i'm i, I really am i think it's going to be a banger so i think what the air force is going to do is what they did the last time we saw madara on karthus which i believe was actually last week he is going to early invade Karthus wants to get those Dark Harvest stacks as quickly as possible, get that little bit of bonus damage, potentially pick up a kill, pick up some camp steals, accelerate his game so he can get to the Malignants earlier and get that ultimate uh, cooldown reduced with the 20 ability haste. So I think I think Air Force Gaming is going to go very hard. They're going to go into the they're going to go into Warrior Gamers jungle early and often. So after that, though, trying to get those dark harvest stacks so right now dark harvest is not in a good spot to the point where they are actually buffing a lot of the keystones on or i believe the half of the keystones on the domination tree uh i know next patch they actually just changed it there was a pve update today it was going to be uh the cooldown for dark harvest stacks if you do not get a kill um once you're below i believe it's 40 percent health you can get a stack as long as you're damaged or the as long as you damage an enemy who's below 40 percent health the uh, the cooldown if you do not get a kill is 45 seconds they were going to drop it to 30. they were going to make it they were going to take away a third of its cooldown they have since changed it now on the pbe it is at 40 seconds so a five second difference but still 
uh i believe electrocute also got a change either in last patch or it's getting a change next patch so this is a um you're right this is a this is a it, it's still a weakened karthus but once those dark harvest changes go through talon the the karthus potentially even zed i believe zed takes electrocute more than uh dark harvest but those two champs specifically if the air force can show this mastery of a wide variety of champions how is anyone supposed to beat them how are you supposed to prepare anything you could be like you know what i'll try to target ban shiro guess what he can play talent i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to target ban kempsey guess what you can't he plays six champions you got five bands and if you target ban anyone on this team this is not like you know what i'm gonna focus off a one trick and try to just get him off and hard focus him as long as the rest of my lanes we're gonna play safe mid we're gonna play for a safe bot lane and we're just gonna camp top and get fed off of him you can't do that against the air force this team is way too good and warrior gamers have to show something here they have to show that the air force is fallible that they are not invincible yeah i completely agree mega you you got it down to a t and and you're flexing your knowledge and i know you know the game if you it's about spreading them out. If uh, if you're playing a more talented team and they're they're ready, then you have to spread out the the, the play. TPs have to be utilized. We stand where mostly top lane stuck to their top lane roots. I don't want to see that this game. I want to see a, a I want to see a poppy TP into the bot lane and helping helping them as much as they can. I want to see I want to see wards being utilized and TP's being utilized at the same time. Because if you can spread out spread out the champions, spread out the other team and focus with more champions and get them get them caught looking at the wrong side of the map, then then you have a chance. But until you do that, you you're going to have to face them one on one. And as we saw from last game, one on ones can go either way. You know that you know that mega that uh, a one on one is never secured, and we and you you have to, you your teammates are there for a reason, and if 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 you play with your teammates and you get some advantage in the numbers, it's a it's a numbers game. League mm -hmm. League of Legends is all about the numbers and getting into a battle where maybe you're one up, maybe it's a three versus two, maybe it's a four versus four versus three either way you you want to get find those advantages as much as possible and with with the runes that these champions are going to choose or these players are going to choose it's going to make a huge difference in in the gameplay and in this upcoming match if so we do have a couple more minutes so huh. all right lcs time we're gonna we're gonna go back to that little bit of LCS talk. As I'm repping Cloud Nine, you know my boys. I got all my right, boys on. All right, I, yeah. Uh, I I was I I will not lie. Dignitas does look good, but I mean, oh. when you have four X Cloud Nine players, yeah. of course they're gonna look good. And Spica, I mean, the fact that what uh, three of them. Or, or sorry, four of them minus Jensen were not playing last bit, and they all just jumped in. And despite the rumors that they were actually not doing that good in scrims, they looked pretty solid on stage. So Dignitas can actually be the sleeper. Also, Immortals, Immortals picked up a two zero yeah. over Shopify. So, Shopify, Shopify but Rebellion. It, it's a it's Shopify Rebellion. I'm about to hard flame here. Um, yeah, it's Immortals and Shopify Rebellion. To my surprise, though, the Immortal that game, that series actually looked pretty good. I believe what was it? Uh, Team Liquid also uh, Team Liquid took down in a two. NRG. Oh, I believe. Yeah, NRG, Team Liquid yeah. took. The, yeah, uh, Yappa, he's back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm really the LCS. Just it looks so much better. The production looks so good. Um, I do actually. I I'm in the Captain Flowers Discord. And one of the people in there, her name is Amy. She makes the emotes for uh, uh, Caps uh, Discord and Twitch. And she did the Captain Floppy, where he has like a, uh, a he has a uh, like a pool noodle. 
and they had a I've clip. seen it. I've seen it. They had someone on the stream, and she just puts in the Discord. My life's ambition has been achieved, and like she she does amazing work. So like I remember looking over, just watching. I'm like, is that the floppy? <laughs> and uh so it's, it was always really funny to uh just see some of those emotes used. but yeah the lcs is actually a lot of fun to watch now and uh, i'm gonna throw some shade on europe it, they are not looking fun. It, like unfortunately it was unfortunate with like the production staff getting let go but uh other than that like the teams just do not look good even g2 is falling i believe they're only three and two right now they are not looking as good as they should be so um gonna be interesting to see how they compete on the international stage but we will get back to that later as we are gonna get into game here in just a second for game two of air force versus warrior gamers yeah a lot of those guys are just returning from msi back to their home uh, home stage and uh yeah we're seeing some great game some great showcases of skill in the pros and in in these leagues as well are gonna get the invade up here like i said they want to get that early bit of invade get the uh the karthus going early first strike oh no sorry dark oh, harvest and talon with first strike but that will get b34's flash out no flash for the uh for the poppy to start that's oh 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 so it is all over the place that is shiro's karthus and madara's talon oh talent with ignite exhaust uh, sorry ignite smite in first strike so the first strike shows we are going to get a lot of action from this talent early the first strike rune for those of you who may not know uh whenever you initiate combat with an enemy you gain gold immediately and then a percentage of the and you also deal bonus damage for i believe it's three seconds and and you get a percentage of that bonus damage that you've dealt as gold back as well so first strike is one of those runes where you want to accelerate this early game get that bonus gold early get those item breakpoints and then just snowball through the game So not really anything crazy happening here, but the Karthus game plan has kind of gone out the window. Like I said, I assumed this was going to be Madara's Karthus going into the jungle, but no, Shiro is going to pilot that in the bot lane. Another AP champ that's just being absolutely gross. Braxy will hit the uh, the hook, and Nerf Gangplank does not fall, but we do see a uh, the Kaelin. Uh, from last game, the support and AD carry did switch. We now got Go Get Em playing the AD carry, and Renata, the Caitlyn from last game, is now the support, but it does not matter. Ghost is popped from Kempsey, but B34 with a great dodge in the bot lane. Karthus picks up the first kill, but they are trying to just get on top of Kempsey. A great flash condemn, and B34 is taken down in a 2v1. Oh, and Braxy picks up a sever kill, but Kempsey is going a little bit too deep. Will eat two turn shots and falls to Chrissy. Oh, Kempsey. Oh, and an owl play, and then you just messed it up. You bungled it, but it does not matter. A great series of events in the bot lane, though, gives the Air Force a 3-1 to one lead at three minutes. Oh, my God. Yeah, we talked about that early aggressiveness. Working again, game two. Come eight. Their, their eyes are not set on minions. <laughs> the, these first couple of minutes, they're they're set on champions, and we see that so, we see that right now. So that 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 so you got you got a bad Kempsey's vein. That that dude's disgusting. Also, I I need to double check his op.gg. Make sure he's not near my rank. And if he is, I am not playing ranked. If I know he's playing at the same time, but Anivia is walking in. Madara does get hit with the Anivia Q and E combo. The taunt comes through onto Adam, and he is just CC chained, and he is going to. Oh, he's just barely gonna make it out with less than 30 health. Just barely survives gets back to his own turret blows the flash but i mean 
I'll take a blown flash in a trade for not dying and giving over a kill to a Ramus that already has one kill. <laughs> you got that right. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all about numbers, and uh, if you can escape with your HP bar, that's it's a little bit more than zero, then you're you're in the green. Braxy does hit another hook onto the Renata. Renata falls again. It's two kills for Karthus, a 15 CS lead, and B34 is low again. You know Kempsey's looking, and Madara's looking too. They are going to attempt the dive here. The Condemn will go through. The damage is right there, and Madara with the blades will help secure Kempsey his second kill of the match. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Anivia was able to kill the Zed, who after he backed, there was a clean 1v1. So a bit of a misplay there from Adam, but I mean, you're giving up one kill right now. You're only down seven CS. The rest of your team is looking strong. Oh, Sivir gets hooked, strong does indeed. not hit the spell shield in time. The handshake from Renata just puts a little bit of damage back into Shiro, but he is he's healthy. Not a lot of mana, but it doesn't exactly matter right now. Yeah, you see them working together quite well, taking their backs, taking their recalls at the same time. I feel like uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, Warrior Gaming, they need to focus on getting their ADC some gold. If the Renata has to back solo, then she needs to take that, that recall when she can. But Sivir has to stay in lane as much as she can and farm up as much as she can because she's going to be needed crucially in these next coming battles so this is not that good for the poppy right now kempsey is farming very well and this is a giant wave stacking in against b34 but it doesn't matter kempsey has popped the ult will dash tumble and not oh b34 with a great flash is gonna be able to get away but uh this wave is still stacked against the poppy vein will will back away madara has a decent amount of damage the stun connects but enough no little bit of follow-up kempsey is pretty low did take a hit from the from the cannon minion he wants to stay he wants this kill but he has to back because all poppy has to do is throw the buckler and vein will fall Yeah, both strong top laners going at it. Vayne has the ability to close range a little bit more than he does. I, I think uh, Poppy wants the, a little bit more action, but she just can't get to it just yet. we got a potential... So... We were potentially looking at a gank mid, but Ramus decides not to go in, but is currently fighting the pike, trying to just get some repeat damage in. Electric Cube Pox onto the Zed. The the hook misses. The Requiem is called down. Chrissy is low and will fall to Shiro. And Nivea runs out of mana, but Adam is trying to get out with his life. It will not happen as one kill gets picked up by the Sivir. The Talon will pick up another and Madara is low, but it does not matter. The burst onto the Sivir secures another kill. Anivia gets hooked again, and Braxy is right there. The wall almost kept the pike in range. That would have been another kill. So close, yet so far for Warrior Gamers. And a three and a half thousand gold lead for the Air Force at eight minutes in with all of the grubs going down for the Air Force, this is a very solid team to push with as Bosphus is trying to get some damage down, but Kempsey is able to stay just barely out of range, and Shiro is coming top lane. Yes, closest so far, like you said. They're trying to get make a dollar out of 15 cents. But it does not... They are trying... Kempsey is able to pop the ult and the ghost. The ult from the Ramus connects with the taunt as well. Bosphus is trying. He is running. But Madara, he bought enough time for his jungler to arrive. 
The Rams is trying to speed away. Bozfus will dash through the minion. They will both just barely escape. They know they had to blow so much on Kempsey. They blew the pop go. They blew the Rammus all. They were not able to even find the kill because Madara was able to parkour over the walls. Braxy is here. They are hunting. They are able to spot him. The ward is pinged. They know there's that control word there, but Braxy and Madara are going hunting. Yeah, um, you know this mobility is such a huge factor in this game. And if you can be mid one minute and then be up top next minute, it's it's, it's such a breather for your teammate. And to get that extra, extra bit of damage if you can. So we've hit our first major item break point. Uh, ooh, Braxy getting caught just a little bit. Takes a chunk of damage, but is able to dash away. Only really loses about 20% of his health. But the Karthus has faded ashes. So Karthus is a champion now. Um, four kills at 10 minutes. Almost half of his team's kills with seven out of nine uh, kill participation. This Karthus is very scary. Yeah, he's down bot, and we, we're looking at Ramis right now, clearing out some of his camps near the bot lane. I, I want to see, I want to see him go down there and maybe make something out of, uh, maybe make a meal out of the, out of this ADC and and support combo. We might get a nice little, uh, nice little party down bot lane, but nothing else is gonna happen. Bozfus. Uh, steadfast presence just to try to get back through the lane quickly just means that Kempsey is able to dash forward and take a solid trade. Meanwhile, we are going to get some action here. Bot and Nivea was pulled in. A lot of damage is going down. Chrissy is low. We are probably going to get the Karthus Requiem. We are not going to actually get the Karthus Requiem, but a lot of damage from Kempsey onto this turret just gives two full plates already. The rest of the Void Grubs are up. Anivia gets pulled in and taken down. Four members of the Air Force kill the bird. The Requiem comes down, and it will pick up the Rammus as well. The Karthus is unstoppable, and Bozfest is low and has to run away. It's about show, showcasing your skill, and uh, and uh, sometimes, yeah, if you take the driver's seat and go full force by yourself, you can come out on top. And with some of the champions at the Air Force pick, you you can dive in and dive out as quickly as they're right now that they came to. So the top lane turret for Warrior Gamers, the outer turret is down to one plate. This vein solo was able to take four plates as Madara and Braxy are going to attempt to secure the last three grubs, which means they will, they've already secured the fourth one, which means every time they to enter, uh, enter combat with the turret, they are going to pop that extra Void Might, get that extra little bit of damage down. They are going to be able to secure this sixth unopposed and a great show of early game pressure means that this turret is going to drop top very easily the poppy alt the keeper's verdict will not mean anything the turret is taking a lot of damage madara wanted to look for the dive but they are not going to be able to make that happen ramus is nearby and they did not want to risk it just even without knowing where he was Yeah, I mean, but uh, you have to note that the vein is pretty squishy, and if you can lock her down for five seconds, that's going to be most of, oh. 90 percent of her HP. Let's see, we got Ramis. Let's see if we can get a stun on her. Kemsey is dancing oh, around, so quick, going though. invisible. Bose so fist does not even stand a chance. Kemsey wins the two v one, and this dude is on fire on the vein. Going to take the first turret, five plates solo, a massive amount of gold into the pocket of this vein. A 58 CS lead, three kills. Meanwhile, his team's able to pick up the dragon by himself. That is a 3,000 gold lead in just the vein. That's a full item. A full item lead over the poppy in vein cannot do anything to match. Anivia is going to try to bring some pressure, but they are not. Oh, 
The Vein was forced to stop the back, but we are about to get a 4v1 dive bot. Shiro does not even need to tank. Madara is right there. The Hostile Takeover will connect onto three. A lot of damage in return, but it doesn't matter. Chrissy is so low and blown up. Shiro, a double kill, is going to be able to, with the help of these Void Mites, take the bottom turret. So that will leave the... So they were able to take about, I believe it's just about 11 turret plates between top, mid, and bot before the turret uh, before the turret plates drop it at 14 minutes, which gives the Air Force an 8.2k gold lead at 15 minutes. Yeah, we see a Nivea sticking to uh, to the mid lane. I I want to see her venture out and maybe maybe do some ganks on her own. Ramus is trying to trying to get to both bot and top lane, and that's that's very difficult for a jungler to do. I want to I want to see this uh, Anivia uh, see where her team needs help and get there as quickly as possible because her assistance is needed. Braxy and the Air Force, they're just playing with them. He's going to dash through. He's not going to connect onto the Nevia, but he is just not in a good spot right now. That's just a free kill given over to Chrissy, but almost took a Nevia out with him. So low, all single digit health. No death from below will kill him right now, but the Karthus ult was not channeled in time, knowing that a Nevia still had the egg and it was not worth it but the Karthus all gets channeled just in time to kill go get him boys this Sivir falls again Adam is running away he is going to get chased down the power ball comes through Adam is booped by Chrissy N another kill for the Ramis yes yeah, so you can see warrior grit gaming striking back trying to stay in this game oh Bo's fist is gonna fall again the bailout will only keep him alive for just a couple extra seconds. Braxy does not connect the hook, but this Karthus is terrifying. That is 25% yeah. of Sivir's health in one kill. And they're just going to you're jump. down, then you need to take your recalls as soon as possible. Even if Nine your HP is 70%. You want to be fighting with a full 100%. If you're down, make your recalls as much as possible. It's it's not a very fun. It's not very glamorous. It's not very shiny. If you're down a couple of kills, you're going to have to take them. And you're going to have to fight and make the battles worth, worth everything you got. Madara was searching for another kill, just waiting for someone to step up. But the collective CS leads the only lane that war gamers have a lead in is the mid lane, but it's only a lead of one. All right, here's this Anivia. Can oh, she be there a at lot the right of time damage there. onto Kempsey, and then they yeah. are gonna be able to get on top. Chrissy finally, after four attempts, is able to help kill the vein. Kempsey getting a little bit overzealous there, but will die to his hubris. Braxy is walking in. The electrocute damage pops, but not enough to get him low enough that they want to continue chasing. Madara is jumping, parkouring over the walls. This Anivia is starting to become a real thorn in the side for the Air Force. That AOE Glacial Storm is dealing a lot of damage, but the death from below will put him just barely. The bailout is there. Almost got a kill in return. It would have survived the Requiem deals enough damage to the entirety of Warrior Gamers that they do not want to continue fighting anymore. But Anivia with a great steal onto the red. Yes, she's showing her team that just because she wasn't there in the first couple battles, that she was farming her lane and that she is ready to, to participate a little bit more in these next couple battles. Oh, a nice handshake connects onto Braxy. We'll take a turret shot. But... Uh, at this point, I don't really know what you can do about Shiro. He has the full Blackfire Torch. He also has a fully stacked, 25 stacked Medjais. He is a dominant force. We might get a little bit of a trade here. Adam the Pancake is going to try to run away, but Karthus is nearby. 
They are going to try to run down Adam, but Chrissy does not really want to go any further. Mountain Dragon falls for the Air Force, and we are going to get Infernal Soul with five damage uh, champs on Air Force. This would be destructive. Yeah, we're seeing uh, we're seeing uh, some passive play. Rambus not wanting to go in, taking taking what he what he can, not 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 forcing a fight too early. So Blackfire, Leandry's twenty five stack Magi's on one hundred and sixty seven CS for Carthus. Uh, just so much gold, over ten thousand at twenty minutes, and these are the type of leads that you rarely see comebacks from. We have seen insane wombo combos, uh, SKT EDG in twenty seventeen worlds, but there's no wombo here. The wombo is Anivia has enough mana to channel her alt for the whole fight, and the and the entirety of Air Force just does not decide to do anything about it. Hostile takeover hit Shiro, but it does not mean anything. Karthus's auto attacks hurt like nothing. They are literally wisps of smoke against the rest of his team. Yeah, some of these players' champion pools are pretty vast. And as you mentioned earlier, Mega, maybe Fearless Draft has to come into play because these guys are looking good. And they're looking good on a couple of these champions. Madara is in a bad spot, taunted inside of the Glacial Storms, trying to parkour over the walls, but Chrissy is there to flash and a nice shutdown onto Anivia. Again, they're getting a little bit cocky, but I don't really think it matters. The Kraken Slayer Rage Blade combination is there for Kempsey, and they are going to die both of us, but it does not matter. He is not going to be able to survive this after Shiro has his say. Shiro goes legendary. Adam the Pancake is half health onto the Sivir, the hook misses. They're trying to get him low enough. Does not mean anything. Braxton goes a little bit too far. Sivir picks up her third kill of the match. The Shira Karthus Requiem comes down. The wall almost displaced him in time. Would have canceled the ult. So Karthus' ult, for those of you who do not know, his ultimate ability, the Requiem, where it comes down and deals damage, it is called a channel. You have to remain stationary for the duration of the channel. You cannot be CC. You cannot move or the channel will cancel and his alt would have done nothing. It was still going on cooldown and would have been a massive loss for the remainder of that fight. However, with the alt still going through, it didn't pick up any kills. It got a couple dark harvest stacks, but nothing else from it. Yeah, I was kind of questioning the Karthus pick early on in the draft, but now seeing it on the rift, it he's really showing up and showing out for his team. He is doing an insane amount of damage. Right now, the Zed is kind of the, uh, the non-factor. Zed has no kills. Meanwhile, the rest of his team kind of sitting on... Uh, Karthus is over half of his team's kills, 10 out of 19, an absolute insane amount of kills right here. Braxy is going to get caught out. That wall glacial storm combination, but Poppy misses the uh, Poppy misses the push, does not get the pike into the wall. A great combination for Poppy. Um, Again, I, I feel like I'm just putting on a uh, tutorial here. Meanwhile, Madara is getting rooted. The handshake pulls him into the Glacial Storm. And again, this is just a... The Anivia pick is starting to work out. Oh, yeah. Poppy. Bozfus is not going to be able to do anything. Meanwhile, Kempsey and Shiro are going on a rampage. Kempsey picks up a double kill. And the Anivia goes into the Yeg and will eventually fall. A triple kill for Kempsey. And a very good team fight for Air Force after a, a kind of a bad start. Braxy and Madara both getting picked off, but the duo of Shira and Kempsey are enough to prevail in the extended fight. Yeah, the league is all about capitalization. And can you capitalize on, on what you've earned already? And Air Force are capitalizing on a strong early game. They're not letting it get away from them at all. And they are sticking with the fights. They're pushing all three lanes at the same time. And it's just working out for them. 
I, I would so say I, that the Warrior Gaming, they have their mid lane is really strong. And I'll bring up Anivia one more time. She needs to focus on her lane, but also focus on getting top oh, and getting no. a little earlier in the game because Renata if, gets if, pulled. If Air Force Renata can just gets get something started, they're just gonna roll on through. So it's it's about uh, shutting them down. And yeah, if you lose a couple plates mid, that's all, that's all right. But you need you need to do some ganking as a mid laner as well. Renata got pulled. Braxy with a great hook just brings sh brings sh uh, the Renata right to Shiro, able to grab another kill. Three for nothing. Blinking health bars on a couple of the Air Force, but it does not matter. So much damage is just being put out by this team comp, and there's nothing they can do about it. Bozefest is trying to bait Adam in, but there's not going to be anything else here for them. As the push is finally going to start, the Keeper's Verdict will push Braxy away as Adam goes in with the death mark. It's not going to be able to find enough damage. The Poppy is still tanky. And the lower she gets, the higher armor and magic resist she gets. Yeah, what do you what do you think that uh, Warrior Gaming can uh, stay in this fight? Mega. Just they have to play around this Anivia. Anivia is the one dealing 90% of the damage because every member on the Air Force team is extremely weak. But you and she was also able to grab the Zonias now. That that stasis keeping her alive for an extra two and a half seconds. It's a direct counter to the Carthasol. As long as you wait about a second after Carthas starts channeling, you pop the Zonias. You are guaranteed to not die from that at least. The only issue is. You're a sitting duck that entire time, and the rest of the Air Force team will just pounce on you. So, I there was a missed opportunity. Like every time I start start explaining it, they just instantly start fighting. But Poppy is able to use the uh, the dash. It will push whatever she targets, and it if it hits them into a wall, it will stun the target. So Anivia's wall, that wall that she puts up whenever someone's in her glacial storm, it does count as a wall for the uh, issue of Poppy's dash. So I wanted to see this combo executed a little bit better. It had a lot of potential as Madara is going in. The Sivir does spell shield a healthy bit of the damage, but it's not enough. Renata flashes away, scared of Braxy and his hook, knowing Shira is Shiro is right there. The alt is online for the Karthus, but so close to 16. That extra little bit, that extra alt point could be an extra 300 damage. The death cap is completed. Got the Blighting Jewels working on a Void Staff in this Karthus. This Karthus could very well 100 to 0 Renata. Yeah, if you look at his KDA, 13 and 0, 700 bounty gold though. But wow, isn't he he's having the game of his life right now. 302 AD from the Zed is just it's absolutely brutal. 16,000 gold in the lead at 27 minutes. There's nothing that Warrior Gamers can really do about it. We are going to get a little bit of a fight here. The Glacial Storm is active. Braxy is taking a lot of damage. And Kempsey is behind enemy lines. And 2v1ing is not hit by the hostile takeover. But go get him, boys. Will fall. The bailout is not enough. Braxy is still stuck in the storm. Anivia goes golden. But it doesn't matter. Chrissy is right there to taunt Madara. But they are just taunting them to their grave. Bozfus is not going to be able to find anything. A four for nothing again. Oh, this is just brutal. They are just trying to bait Bozfus in, knowing they have so much damage to burst him down. Yeah, this game is looking all but over right now. It, uh, I can't say that either team is the, the victor of the season but definitely this week air force gaming has played a better game and 
at this point, the Air Force is just 100% the team to beat. There's nothing else that Warriors Gaming can really do. The Infernal Soul is spawning in 20 seconds, That and Air Force is just going to be able to easily pick this up. This vein is going to be able to shred with Kraken Slayer, Rageblade, and Light Slinger, uh, or sorry, Terminus, just the extra damage on every single auto attack, no matter what items that Ramus and the Poppy buy is just going to shred them. And Ramus was forced to buy the Koenig Rooker and get that extra little bit of magic resist. But again, you sacrifice that magic resist. You haven't even finished your thorn mail. You have an extra chain vest in there that is not going to mean anything. So a little bit of a misplay here from Chrissy on the item building. But at this point, I don't really think it even matters that much. Even if you build properly, you just do not win this. Yeah, I mean, I shout out to the Warrior Gaming players and the, all their fans. I know they came came out to see them put up a a decent fight, and I think that's what they did. It's just sometimes the game can get out of hand, and you're you're stuck uh, hiking up a hill that may be a little bit too steep. So two uh, two picks right here. The uh... Raxi has got caught out and a great pick on the Shiro and he is stuck in a bad spot. However, he does still have the ult. It will get channeled. Madara gets a triple. Half health from the Requiem, but it doesn't matter because Adam is in the base. Anivia is by herself. She's trying to back, but Madara knows he's hunting him down, trying to find that last hit, but Adam is just going to finish the game he's gonna finish? by himself. Anivia is trying to run away. No, he can't TP back in the lane. There's nothing to TP to. Oh no, goes golden as a statue of Warrior Gaming as they fall to the Air Force and 2-0, another dominant game. They got a little cocky there at the end, but they knew they had the damage. They knew that every single one of Warrior Gamer had to get on top of Shiro and Kempsey immediately or they were going to lose. But Adam is just like, yeah, I'm just going to split push him in the game. I'm over this. I don't want to play anymore. Uh, yeah. I'm right, just going to get out of here. They had their hearts set on finishing this up, a clean sweep, and that's what they did. And, yeah, sometimes in the rift, uh, there's a little, little to no remorse for for taking out uh, the enemy's nexus. And that's what they did. They marched right on through. And uh, yep. Warrior Gaming had uh, little to nothing to say about it. Yep. That's what well happens done, when... Though. Yeah, well done throw from Warrior Gaming. They did put up a solid fight, but Kempsey, Shiro, Madara, they were all just way too good. Braxy and Adam did get caught out. It's a little bit of bad positioning from them, but when you got the rest of your team behind you and they're just able to make sure that you stay alive or they pick up at least one kill in return, you go even in the fight, you're just guaranteed to win that game. It's just better teamwork. And you're just naturally on a better skill level than everybody else. So, again, Air Force is just the one to beat. So, that is going to do it for us tonight. Thank you, Brad, for joining us. Next week's matches, we have the French Army of Air and Space, who we did get to see in the very first match that we had. They will be going up against the UK Veterans Gaming Group. And that is for our EU matches starting at 2 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And for North America matches starting at 8 p.m., we have the Coast Guard versus Goats and Glory. So, we got the Marines and the Coast Guard. So, two two excellent games we should actually potentially get to three games next uh next week which i believe would be the first time that we would get to see three games in our north american team are you excited brad oh mega i am deeply excited i can't wait to see what kind of comps these teams come up with I absolutely just a reminder if you would like to help support the afdl and help make more of these events possible you can click the link below the stream or hit exclamation donate in the chat thank you again very much for everybody being here hopefully we hit our sub goal i have not been able to check but subs are another great way for you to help um keep this keep the stream keep everything operational thank you all for joining us today and we will see you next week
love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm funded play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working out maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so I can make a better me better believe in your mind cause it's everything you can mold shape find anything all it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity it's mind over everything and when i feel like this i'm immortal when i feel like this i'm immortal when i feel like I'm immortal. 